That wasn't very nice of Coco, was it? He says he won't be here on Thursday. And meanwhile, he's nowhere to be found today. Just when we've got so much to announce. <coughs> what's that? <coughs> uh, uh, I can hear something. <coughs> there it is again. There's something here. Or someone. <coughs> Oh, I hope it's not a burglar. Oh, I wish I could fly away like Coco. Hmm, something's not right here. Can you hear that? Coco, is that you? Mm, Coco, that's you, isn't it? I recognize your voice. Oh, I'm pretty certain that the sound is coming from the toy basket. Coco's hiding in there, just like that bird in a cuckoo clock. You know what we're going to do? We'll take a look at our next item. Meanwhile, I creep over to the basket and throw it open. That will change his tune. This morning, when I was sitting on my perch in the garden, I saw a large fat blackbird whistling a song. And then a plane flew over the garden. You know, one of those uh, planes they have in the Air Force. It was a really fast one. And what a racket it made. Oh, Coco, terrible. Oh, surely lots of airplanes fly over your lovely garden every day. Yes. But I only saw the plane at first, and it was only when the plane had nearly passed that I heard it. It was very strange. I nearly fell off my perch. Tell me, Coco, what is sound, actually? Well, um, my teacher, Jan Janssens, says that the sound is in fact vibrations that we hear, because we have ears. Some of us have large ones, others are teeny weeny ones. <laughs> I know that, Coco, but surely the bigger your ears, the better you can hear. Isn't that right? No, that's not true. Because a dog hears ten times better than a human. And I know some animals who have much bigger ears and yet they don't hear as well. But it's not my ears we're talking about, Coco. So, what in fact is sound? If you go and stand at the edge of a quiet pond, sometimes you can see a fish coming to the surface. At the point where the fish breaks the surface, a circle appears. The circle gets larger and larger until it reaches the edge of the pond. The ripples it makes slowly smooth out. You can think of sound basically in the same way. Sound causes ripples in the air and Thanks to our eardrums, we're able to receive this sound and transfer it to our hearing. Well, I know all about that ripples in the water stuff, because when Grandad Flap jumped into the pond, he made huge waves in it. Grandmother Flap didn't speak to him for two weeks afterwards. It's really true. Ah, yes, but how come you see the plane first and only later actually hear the plane? Because the plane's flying so fast, of course. Sound is composed of vibrations traveling through the air. These vibrations have to start somewhere, of course. Just as a stone causes ripples in the water, the same goes for a plane. The movement of the plane creates sound because it displaces air and the air waves travel in ever increasing circles. When the vibrations reach our ears, we hear the plane. But because light travels faster than sound, and you see quicker than you hear, you first see the plane and then only later do you hear the sound it makes. And uh, tell me, how fast does the sound travel? It travels, um, let me think, um, well, let's say uh, 10 miles an hour, maybe? Maybe not, I don't know. At a height of a hundred miles up in the sky, Sound travels at 750 miles per hour. However, there are planes which travel faster than the speed of sound, even twice as fast. Now and again you hear a mighty crack which makes everything shake. Well, that's when a plane is breaking the sound barrier. That's what it's called. Of course, the plane doesn't really break anything. It's just a figure of speech. Ah, oh, now I understand. It's lucky that we pirates can't fly through the sound barrier 
Boy, now that would make bang. <laughs> Why, just imagine Coco flying through the sound barrier. Well, uh, at least now I know why you first see the plane and then only later hear the noise. Oh, thank you, Mr. Owl. Oh, thanks, <laughs> Mr. Owl. Thanks, Mr. Owl. Da -da -da -da. Ah, yeah, but it's you. Why are you hiding, Coco? Trying to give me a fright where you didn't work, did it? Uh, no, I just wanted, uh, I simply wanted to, uh, to do some uh, gymnastics uh, to keep fit, you know. I uh, see, to keep fit. And you have to do them in the basket. Uh, yes, uh, uh, yes. Uh, where else? I bet you thought I'd never find you in there. Huh. Uh, y yes. With one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and, and four three and, and four five and six one and two and three and, and four eight nine and ten four, are you training Jaffa? <laughs> are you getting too fat or something? Coco, <laughs> I have to be fit. I'm going to run a race with our friends over there later. With a cheetah? Mm -hmm. Chopper, you haven't a chance in a million. Chopper, don't you know how fast that four-legged Formula One can run? Ah, uh, <laughs> where there is a will, there is a way. Nobody is unbeatable, Coco. With the one, two, Chopper, three, four, one... this sleek and one. beautiful cat is the fastest four-footed animal on Earth. It has to be. What do you mean, it has to be, Coco? Well, the cheetah lives out in the open African plain where it can't hide. This means it can't stalk its prey like its big relatives, the lion and the tiger. It can't get any nearer than 200 yards from the fast-footed antelopes and gazelles. So it has to sprint. So what? I can too, of course. Japa, the cheetah can reach speeds of up to 70 miles an hour. Nothing or nobody on four legs can reach anything like that speed. It's quite incredible how fast it can run. Really? Okay, I'll drop the fitness training. I can't beat that. But aren't antelopes terrific sprinters? Well, um, this large cat isn't always successful. It's built to run fast. Take a look. Thin and slender body, large paws, and a long tail to keep its balance. Aha, uh -huh. look. Why, it's beautiful. Our teacher, Miss Carlin, told us that the cheetah is the only member of the cat family which can't pull in its claws. Oh, yeah? That's probably to be able to have a firmer grip when it's running. Mm. Yeah. Its spotted coat allows it to blend in with the scenery. But, mm. but what does the mother do with her cubs? Surely they can't run as fast as her when they are hunting. Well, um, they don't join in the hunt. They're still very playful, just like our domestic kittens, and would only attract the attention of the prey. Before the female leaves to go hunting, she hides her youngsters in the long grass, so she won't get distracted. <sighs> Wow, look at those sweet little cups. Oh, they are so sweet. They stay two years with their mother, don't they, Coco? Mm -hmm. It's only once they've mastered all the ins and outs of hunting that they go their own way, isn't it? Yes, yes, oh, but so Jabba, cheetahs live on their own. Lions, mm -hmm. however, are most social and live as a family, hunting together as a pack. Cheetahs, on the other hand, only look each other up in the mating season. Nowadays, the danger for a cheetah does not lie in being hunted for its skin, but in being too popular. What's wrong with being popular, Chappet? There's nothing wrong in that. Look at me, I'm popular. There's nothing wrong in that, surely. The thing is that every tourist wants to see these beautiful animals. So they chase the cheetahs and never give them the chance to hunt in peace. Ah. The tourists don't mean any harm, but in fact, it's the tourists and not the cheetahs who are responsible for the disappearance of the gazelles from the hunting areas. Yes, so friends, tourists, remember, if you see a cheetah where you live, slinking through the streets or through your garden on the lookout for an antelope or a gazelle, let it have its snack, or you're in for it. You better believe it. And if you happen to look like an antelope, get lost quick.
Yes, super, super quick. You'll stay healthier that way. <sighs> oh, Jumper! Jumper! Uh, uh, ah, look yeah. out! Uh, Behind uh, you! Uh, a cheetah! Uh, ah. uh, oh, SOS! Help! 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 SOS! Ah. <laughs> Jumper! Uh. Okay, if you really insist on knowing, I'm entering a beauty contest for parrots. Uh, what? I read about the contest in yesterday's newspaper. I'm going in for it. That's why I'm exercising. I want to be on top form. That way I'm bound to win. But why exercise in the basket? The children must know about it. I want to surprise them. Wait till they see my photo in a newspaper. Rawr! I'll go and give Uncle Flitz a call. He loves taking photos of everyone. That will come in handy Good for idea. you. Yeah. You know, Joppa, those potatoes last week were really delicious. Is there anything else you can do with potatoes, in fact, actually, in fact? In fact? I've got a recipe here for the celebrated Dutch potato cakes. Oh, come on then. I'm curious to know what they taste like, these uh, famous cakes. Well, first of all you need potatoes. Yes, of course. Huh. Peel two pounds of potatoes. What? Two pounds? You throw the skins away. Of course. Wash the potatoes under cold water, take a kitchen roll and pat the potatoes dry. What? Pat the potatoes dry? <laughs> like you do too, dog. Ruff, 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 ruff. Good dog, good dog. Just pat the potatoes until they're dry. Oh, yes. Right. That's what it's called in the kitchen. Pat a cake. It's the culinary cake. term. <laughs> this ruff, ruff. is a grater. You hear me, Coco? A grater. A grater? No, a grater. Ah, a grater. You take the roughest side and grate the potatoes into a cooking pot. Grate the potatoes into a pot. It's a piece of cake up, up until now. <laughs> up until now. Once you've done that, you take a bowl. Add three tablespoons of flour, four tablespoons of milk, you can use carton milk too, and then you give it all a good stir. Mm, yes. Mm, delicious. Plain sailing up until now. Come on, Jappa. I'm very curious because I've never heard of potato cakes. Yes, yes, yes. Well, peel an onion and take the grater on the rough side. Mm. And you grate the onion over the flour and milk. Mm. You see? It's very easy. Yes. And then you add two eggs. Ah, two eggs. Without the shells, of course. Leave it out, Coco, you and your corner hey, jokes. Hey, 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 stir hey. well, stir well. Now add the grated potatoes to the mix of eggs, mm. flour, milk and onion. Mm. Stir again, adding salt and pepper. And uh, then uh, put it in the oven. Well, um, actually, no. Take a frying pan, mm. add a little cooking oil, mm. let it get hot, oh. then spoon out the potato paste into the frying pan. Frying pan. Yes. Flatten out the paste and mm. fry the cakes on both sides mm. until they're golden brown and crispy. Oh, yummy, oh yes, yummy. it's golden very, brown, very crispy. delicious. You well, see, uh, they are brown and crispy. Yes, mm. very beautiful. Well, I never who would have thought of making cakes from potatoes. <laughs> Once the potato cakes are cooked, place them side by side on kitchen paper uh -huh. to soak off the fat. Uh, yes. Being careful yes. not yes. to place them on top of each other, on the mm, serving no. plate, of course. of course. If you pile one on top of another, they'll go yes. all mushy and lose uh. their taste. Uh. Once they're baked, sprinkle a bit of parsley over them. Ah, parsley! Mm. The green parsley makes a nice decoration. Mm. Now, the Dutch potato cakes are ready to serve. Ah, already? That's quick! Once you've tasted them, you'll never forget them. Eaten with some applesauce or jam, they are real, real, real treat. Mm. Yum, 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 yum. I'm famished, famished. Oh, I can't wait to dig in. Mm. I'm on top form because tomorrow I'm taking part in the beauty contest for Paris.
cats. I'll be standing there right at the front of the stage, and all those rows of giggling little parrot girls in the audience. Oh, Coco, Coco! Huh. Tell me, Coco, uh, are you sure you're going to win that competition? Yep. And why? Do I have to paint you a picture? Huh? Yes. All right then, but you ask for it. First and foremost, I'm the best and the cleverest and the best built and the best looking and the most intelligent and the handsomest and the most charming parrot with the nicest coloring and prettiest beak and the most streamlined claws. Oh and, uh, no! Uh, Why did I ask? It's not that I'm big-headed or anything. You've made your point, Coco. Uh, really? And I'd only just begun. But it's true, isn't it, Jabba? Those other parrots don't stand a chance in the beauty contest. They won't be very happy, I know. That's the way it goes. If Coco enters, the best they can hope for is being runner-up. Oh, yeah. What's going to happen if he really does win? And uh, without my glasses, I'm even better looking. Still, I've got to give the other contestants a bit of a chance. Otherwise, nobody would bother entering the contest. Coco, so for also goodness very... sake, shut up. You're driving me crazy. A bit of modesty wouldn't go amiss. Personally, I'd never say that I was going to win a beauty contest in advance. You know what I mean? Uh, no, I know, because uh, you wouldn't. Your ears are much too big, eh, Coco, give me a break. Oh, you never can take a joke. <laughs>